Hi folks, so today we are ready to hear about motion in a plane which it happens to be the chapter number 4 in your physics class text, 11th textbook. You have already studied motion in a straight line in chapter 3 of the same class and you have further you have studied some portions in your class 9th and some in your class 8th too. Uh, nevertheless, we will be discussing little more things and then try to understand that what are the concepts which are required to understand the motion of an object in a plane means two dimension or in space means in three dimensions where we will be using the whole coordinate system. I am sure that you have already studied the co required coordinate geometry, Cartesian coordinate system in your mathematics class as well and probably your physics class teachers might have also taken these concepts behind uh, discussing the chapters on new Cartesian coordinate system in the chapter on light. Well, let us go ahead in this chapter and uh, see. Uh, let me first revise that what you have already studied in your class 9th or in class uh, 11th in chapter 3, you while discussing the motion of an object in a single straight line, you have uh, taken, uh, okay, let me go with some example. Now, you are at point A, say for example, maybe your home. Now, you are supposed to go to your school which is located at point B, say. Now, often when we do this kind of motion, we go like this according on the roads. Roads are not straight, very practically roads are not straight. These are rather mingled and or this or sometime like this or in some rural areas, children might be finding they, they have to reach from point A to point B covering a larger distance, much larger distance. So, friends you have, you have seen that from traversing from point one to another, you might have to take several paths depending on the conditions. Uh, what are these? These are not the motion in straight line. These are the motion along the two dimensional planes. So, this is a plane, this is on surface, this is on a plane. So, now look what is happening in this situation. You are traversing in order to move from point A to point B which are separated by say a least distance s, say a least distance s, but actually you have to traverse a much larger distance than s. So, this is a motion in a straight line. However, this is these are the practical motions which are a straight motion in a plane. Now, you see these are the distance travelled, distance travelled, this is the distance you have moved or also called path length. I will be using the word that character P L for path length throughout the lecture, throughout this session. Now, this straight line S, the which is the least distance between the two points. A B along a straight line is called displacement. Remember, in all these cases, you are actually traveling, the displacement is only s. Have you understood? Well, now similarly, we can explain the words speed and velocity that the total path length divided by time taken in during this motion is speed, and the displacement divided by the total time taken is velocity. You understand the acceleration as well means the rate at which you are changing your velocity. Your velocity might be decreasing, your velocity might be increasing while going up motion you always move uh, with a faster speed, faster speed. So, you increase your speed, you increase your velocity means your acceleration is positive, but when you are reaching to your destination you decrease your velocity at a particular rate say. So, then it means you are decreasing. So, acceleration is negative and this is also called deceleration in many books. This is also called deceleration, right. So, while discussing in your uh, motion in a straight line, you are taking care of directions by using plus and minus signs. Means, if you are removing in plus x direction say for example, it means your directions or your motions are positive. All the physical quantities be it displacement, distance, velocity, speed, accelerations, all acceleration the way I told you. Uh, are taken positive, but when you are coming in negative direction in opposite direction, then you consider it negative. So, plus and minus take care of your direction, limited direction in this case of motion in a straight line. Now, moving further to this what you have studied, let, let recall the word motion means motion means change of position of an object with time. Remember at this point there is some confusion in or some different kind of things which you might see in different books. 
Yes, rest is many authors consider rest to be a state of motion. Yes, it is a, of course, it is a rest of motion. Rest means when there is no change in position with time. Motion, the kind of terminology we are going to take out around in this text is the state of motion is motion when the position of an object is changing with time. Be clear about it. Okay? Be clear about it friends that motion the way we are defining is the change of position with time. Right? Now, path length you have already studied, I have already explained what the path length is. So, so you understand that path length is always more than or at the most equal to the displacement. Path length is basically the distance traversed during the motion, but it is necessarily either more than the displacement, usually it is more than the displacement in all practical situations. It is very, very rarely you will find that path length is equal to displacement, very, very rarely. But in most of the cases, path length is more than the displacement and at the most the limiting case, the path length is equal to the displacement. You understand it. Now, uniform motion, what do we mean by uniform motion? Remember, this is an approximation. Remember, in while doing chapter 1, we were discussing the methods, how we study science, how we study physics, how we study quantities that we always, always approximate. We had given you some examples for approximation. Remember chapter number 1, that is very important chapter, my dear friends, in your studies in physics, whether you are in 10 plus 2 or going ahead. We wish that you are going ahead in physics for your research studies or in career, but nevertheless uniform motion means when the velocity or the speed is throughout same. Actually it does not happen, but we consider it that as if the velocity or the speed for that matter uh, is throughout same, it does not change, it does not change with time. Uh, average velocity, how do we define average velocity as in a case of a motion in a straight line when only x coordinate is changing, when only x coordinate is changing with time. So, the distance uh, displacement between the two points taken time delta t. So, delta the ratio of displacement divided by the time taken in doing it is called the average velocity. Look, if we I draw suppose this is x t graph position versus time graph and this is the speed, this is the graph I am considering a uniform motion. So, this is how it is a straight line. Well, now if you see this, the slope of it is this is suppose d x and this is suppose d t. So, the slope of which d x by d t will give you the average velocity or the velocity at between this time interval. The same thing you can have show it on different paths. Now, during this interval, during this interval, during this interval, the only thing is that the average velocity during these intervals is different. Now, suppose if you were to take the average velocity between this point from this to this position, from posi this position to this position, then forget about this path, then your velocity will be suppose this is x1 and this is your x2. So, your velocity will be nothing but x2 minus x 1 divided by delta t. Understood my dear friend this uh, I believe that this point should be clear to you. Okay. Well, now, now let us talk about the instantaneous the velocity at a particular instant, the velocity at a particular instant. What is the velocity at a particular instant? Now, if this delta t suppose this delta t happens to be very small this delta t let me draw it again. Uh, yes see now suppose this is a graph. Now, this is the change x versus t. Now, suppose you are taking it like this the between this region say. Now, this point, this point, this point it is obvious that the speed is not uniform. Well, no problem we can study it, we will study it in this chapter throughout we will do it dealing with this kind of situations never worry. So, now at this point suppose if this is t 1 and this is t 2 this is large. Now, if I happen to see shrink my t 2 here, so this is very small. Now, if I say delta t tending to 0 is becoming very small, very small tending to 0. 
it is not exactly equal to 0, but negligibly small that the difference between t 2 minus t 1 is negligibly small. So, this is one particular instant I have hit my palm by this man at a particular instant and nowhere else. So, the force which has gone onto my palm is instantaneous. You have studied all these things in class 9 while discussing class four force in your chapter. So, this is given uh, this is given by when the limit delta t tends to 0. So, this shows you my dear friends the instantaneous velocity etcetera. So, now let us see further the instantaneous velocity this just the instantaneous velocity is just a limiting case when the delta x by delta t is then you have studied in the calculus or uh, if you have done it in physics your physics teacher has did done it very good. But in class in chapter 3 uh, we have done some calculus, but uh, wait for some time you will study all these things in a great detail in your mathematics class. Your mathematics teacher will be discussing it on all these things in a great much greater detail. So, this converts to this notation becomes d x by d t and this is called differentiation. This is called differentiation of position with respect to time. So, velocity is nothing but d x by d t. So, whenever you see this kind of relationship you see you must understand that we are talking about instantaneous values means when the time interval between the two observations is very very small is very very small negligibly small that you call limit delta t tending to 0. Okay? So, that is point clear. So, the velocity at a particular instant is equal to the slope of the tangent if you see this graph x versus t this if you are seeing at this point say now this if delta t is 0. So, this is nothing, but equal to the slope of the tangent drawn at that point particular instant. So, this is the tangent you know what the tangent is. You have drawn lot of tangents in your mathematics geometry classes. Well, we will come continue doing it in class 9th physics 2 uh, in science 2 in chapter on motion we have done uh, this business of drawing a tangent and normals etcetera. Do not worry. So, after understanding the average velocity let us now go for the acceleration. The average acceleration is defined by the change in velocity divided by a given time. Now, remember this is change in velocity not change in speed. This is very important point velocity not the speed. Remember this throughout acceleration is nothing, but change in velocity divided by change in time right. Now, so uh, the average acceleration is given by this equation we understand all these things and you understand the limiting the limiting if you see it on v t graph and the time of between two observations tends to 0 negligibly small that is delta t tends to 0. It means that you are coming from average acceleration to instantaneous acceleration and this is the acceleration we will talk about throughout the course the instantaneous acceleration this is commonly called acceleration at a particular time or a particular instant. So, whenever we talk about we use the word acceleration is this much it means at a particular time it means the acceleration is at a particular instant. However, during the whole course of this uh, chapter and not only in this chapter throughout in physics up in class 11 and 12, you will be seeing situations where the acceleration is constant throughout. So, we will be considering that the uniform acceleration cases only not the variable acceleration. However, it is not the it is again an approximation it is again an approximation. So, we are trying to discuss the problem in a unification manner remember your class uh, 11th chapter 1, where we were talking about how do we study the physical laws. We discussed the two laws, two uh, phenomena called um, unification and reductionism. So, this is a case of unification, right. So, now uh, that likewise you get the uh, velocity uh, as a slope of x t graph. Similarly, we get acceleration as a slope of v t graph, velocity time graph. The important point is this is velocity time graph is not a speed time graph. Yes, uh, in this slide if you see uh, in continuation to what you have studied earlier the area under the velocity time graphs gives you the displacement traverse during this time t 1 and t 2 and now after that you see these, these are the three equations of motions which you have studied in your class 9th 2. Remember what is unique in these equations these are not these are these are there is no sacrosanity in these equations. These equations can be rewritten in different forms differently. You can write hundreds or larger number of equations, but we scientists have 
uh, have been in NMS in understanding these equations motions in these three equations. Otherwise, there is no sacrosanity in these three equations. You can write an n number of equations, such equations, and all are equivalent to each other. What we have done here is that we have written, see you have time in your hand, you have no acceleration in your hand. So, why you want to know what is the final velocity and what is the displacement, total displacement. So, your uh, left hand side, the dependent variables are on those terms only, are on those terms only. So, however, these two equations are sufficient to explain the motion, these two equations 1 and 2, these two equations are sufficiently equivalent and this equation is coming right from these equations and this is just a simplification manipulation, there is no sacrosanity in it, please keep it in mind. If you are, if you are being asked that, uh, if somebody says, argues on it that these are not the only three equations of motions which you are writing, do not worry, say okay. For my convenience, I have chosen these three equations. There can be n number of equations. This is just a matter of convenience, nothing else, friends. So, if the position of the object at time t is equal to 0 is 0, then these are the equations. Otherwise, if the position of time of uh, some object at time t is equal to 0 is x naught, then, then we will just not nothing do nothing, but in place of x, we will write x minus x naught like this. So, this equation will become x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus half a t square and similarly, this equation will become v square is equal to v naught square plus twice a multiplied by x minus x naught, that is true. So, let us, uh, now uh, let us see, now let us go for this, how do we study this motion in a plane, let me come back after this. Motion in two dimension, you know plane, motion in three dimensions in all those directions is in motion in space motion in space. So, now, uh, quantity, now in this case, you can, in, now you have to define that things through directions, different directions. So, the scalars are not sufficient, the quantities are not scalars. So, that the physical quantities which you will now require to explain the motion are different from what you had uh, earlier in the case of motion in state line. So, now you have to define some other quantity, the physical quantities in some other terms which involves directions in them. So, these quantities are called vectors, these quantities are called vectors. So, we have two kind of physical quantities now, scalars and vectors. I will give more emphasis on this vector. So, uh, you might say, sir, we have studied in class 9 2 that there are some quantities we have understood that there are some quantities which can be explained only through their magnitude. Likewise, the distance traveled, nobody asks that in which direction you have done. Yeah, I have, uh, I have moved, uh, I have roamed 4 kilometers today morning, that is all. In which direction it is? No. So, this is the total path length with or the total distance which I traveled in the morning. So, this was a scalar quantity because it can be explained just by its magnitude only. I slept for 4 hours, 4 hours is important. So, this 4 hours is important for explaining, is all important for giving my sleeping. Right? So, this is again a quantity which requires only magnitude, does not require any dimension, which does not require any direction. Now, if I say that I have moved 4 kilometers from my initial position, now this information is incomplete. If I say that I have moved 4 kilometers from my initial position, this information is incomplete in each direction, west direction, in which direction I have moved in which direction I have moved. So, this is the basic question comes in. So, now in order to explain this motion that I have travelled 4 kilometers today morning, I have travelled 4 kilometers today morning. Okay. Now, the question is that in which direction you have moved, it means you need to have direction also. So, these quantities which are requiring magnitude plus the directions like velocity, like displacement, these are vector quantities. Remember, we have not told these quantities in your class 9th or earlier, because the reason is that these vector quantities are those quantities which require a particular algebra, a particular equation to satisfy, a particular uh, addition uh, law of vector law of addition, which is called vector law of addition, particular algebra. It is different from the simple uh, algebra, mathematical algebra, which you have been studying so far. Uh, in your mathematics classes or in physics classes or wherever it you have been using, uh, that is a simple algebra, but this vector algebra is slightly different. You can understand it like this, that I have moved say 
uh, four steps in this direction, right? And then I move two steps backwards in this direction. So four steps in one direction, two dimension, two steps back in this another direction. Now my total displacement is from this point to this point. Too small. Now if I happen to add the total displacements, then I will get a different value. Then I will get different value. So I, my total motion is confused total motion is confused. So, I will get a different value. Now, no, I will remember uh, what I have to see that my the initial position and the final position and that you cannot simply get by adding these two quantities, these two physical quantities like you add in simple algebra. So, this is not simple algebra. So, this is we need to have a different vector algebra, algebra which is called vector algebra. It is multiplication, it is it's multiplication. So, I will be discussing about how do we add the two vector quantities, how do we subtract two magnet, two vector quantities, how do we multiply two vector quantities etcetera and how do we multiply a vector quantity with a real number. This all I will be doing later, but have you understood, I am sure that you must have understood by now that why do we define a new quantity, new set of physical quantities called vector quantities and these are different from scalar quantities. So, once you recall let me sum up it up by saying this that scalar quantities are those quantities which can be defined through their magnitudes only and the vector quantities are the quantities which can be defined by through their directions as well as magnitude, but at the same time they follow the special law of addition called vector law of addition. Remember this vector law of addition is very important, very very important. I give you an example. Now, if I suppose there are you see the electric current, there is one wire in which I 1 current is flowing like this, there is another wire which joins this point and this here is the current I 2. Now, the two wires join here and gives another current to this current I. So, this I is simply I 1 plus I 2, right. So, here the direction of current nobody matters, nothing, nothing talks about nothing. So, no matter whether this wire is in this direction or in this direction or this wire is in this direction or wherever it is as soon as, as long as they are added up. So, they will keep on adding up. Now, remember the though if you see the direction current has direction, current has magnitude I 1 I 2, but still these are not vector quantities. Understand it very clearly still these are not the vector quantities. So, having said this you must understand it very clearly my dear friends, very clearly this is the catch at this vector point, at this point of study that stellar are the quantities which require only magnitude to, uh, to explain. The vector quantities require mag, uh, magnitude as well as direction, but at the same time they follow a particular law of addition called vector law of addition. We are going to talk about this addition just a while ago. Now, means vectors uh, for example, vector you need vector quantities to define displacement, have you understood velocity, acceleration in a plane. Say either you take a plane or you take a space, these rules you will find can be extended if you are working in plane, these rules can be very easily extended to space, three dimensional space very easily. So, we are going to discuss here only largely to plane and this can be defined rewritten in the form of a space very easily, just you have to add one more component that is all, nothing doing, nothing different. So, I will be discussing a plane, to, to a plane the space is very, the three dimension is very simple then. Now, motion on of object in a plane, they requires projectile, uniform circular motion is an example of it. Uh, now, let us little further, scalars are the c, the distance travelled, mass of an object. When you say what is your mass, we do not say in which direction it is, mass is mass. You never talk about theta, what is the temperature of a body? So, many centigrade, 37 degree 0.67 degree centigrade or 98.4 degree, degree Fahrenheit, that is all, nothing else, no direction. Similarly, time I had given you an example that if you are sleeping for 4 hours, that is all. 4 hours in east direction, 4 hours in west direction, nobody talks about it. It is nonsense to talk about any direction with the time. So, 
at the most you can say plus or minus that is simple. So, and these follow the simple algebra. You, you have moved 2 kilometers in the first hour, 3 kilometers in the second hour, how much you have moved in, in the 2 hours? 2 plus 3 by 5 kilometers, the simple distance travel. So, this is following the simple algebra, right. Vectors, likewise, as I did this a small activity here, moving 4 steps in this direction and then coming back in another direction by 2. Uh, two steps and then, then measuring the initial and final positions, I saw it does not require, it cannot be explained by simple algebra, it requires a different algebra which is called vector algebra. So, they require, uh, it is clear and see when I say that they follow a particular law of vector addition, this law of vector addition could be triangular law or could be parallelogram law. I will be explaining these things little bit, little time ago, after just after a little time. Uh, now, how do we represent? See, we represent these scalars by this is an international convention, friends, by italic characters. It's a, these all are italic characters, okay, and no bold facing, no bold facing, simple italic characters. So, they represent scalar physical quantities, but vector quantities, vector quantities are space, are there are three methods of writing vector, vector quantities. Number one, which we are using writing them straight, no italic. This is your displacement, this is your velocity, this is your acceleration, this is your force, this is your momentum, okay, etcetera and so far so on. I am taking the examples of the physical quantities which you have studied so far. Well, then this is, uh, now they are, uh, I mean bold face, some books are writing it like this s and arrow ahead equally good or s or simple bar ahead equally good. There are different notions, notations which are given in equal in different, different books. So, friends uh, when I was in school, uh, some of my books used to rotate like uh, write uh, the vector quantities like this. Uh, now, nobody does it like this, but in many books you will find this kind of notation or this kind of notation also. Do not worry, but here uh, now, it is easy to word process it. So, we do it in bold face. So, your textbook is largely using in bold face. It is little difficult in typing. So, when we write it however, we use this notation because writing in bold face is difficult. So, when you are going to write in your copy in your notebook, the, please use this notation. So, when I am going to write suppose here in the text in the on the board, I will be largely using this, but when I am using something typed beforehand then I will be using this. Do not worry. So, do not be confused with this symbol and this symbol. Now, remember the modulus of this vector quantity, here is the velocity, is nothing but the magnitude of velocity v. Now, this is the magnitude of velocity. So, this becomes a speed. So, I have written it in italic in the form of scalar, right. This is italic, right. You see, this is italic, right. So, go ahead. Now, we will talk about position vector a little and then in this uh, say. So, the look this how this vector is represented, how this vector quantity is represented. Now, this is the tail of a vector quantity, this is represented by an arrow, right. Now, the, the magnitude of the arrow is nothing but tells you the magnitude of this vector quantity. Suppose, this is equal to V. So, how long it is? This tells you a comparative study of whether it is a large vector or a small vector. What is the magnitude of this vector? Tail is tells you the starting point. The heel, the head tells you the final point of it and this whether it is the direction tells you the direction of motion, the direction of motion of this thing. Uh, now, the position coming back to the position, uh, the, I have taken these diagrams right from your textbook. Now, now from your textbook I have taken these diagrams uh, just for the sake of clarity, so that uh, you can match it very well. Uh, now, the initial position is considered as the Cartesian coordinate system 0, O origin. So, this its coordinate are 0, 0, right. Now, if an object starts moving from this point and reaches to this point, 
point P, point P, point point P. So this O P, this O P, whose magnitude is R. Say this is x direction, this is y direction, x y Cartesian coordinate system. So this is called position vector, O P. So friends, in this episode, I have what I have done. I have just reviewed what you have studied before. I have done tried to do some vector algebra here. I have tried to explain you what are the scalar quantities, what are the magnitude vector quantities, what type of quantities you will be requiring to explain the motion in a plane or in a space. Uh, and I have explained that how these vectors are being rotated and denoted, what are the notations behind that. And I have explained the position vectors, some simply. I will be doing little more about this position in the next episode. So, till then friends, bye.